So Alistair, what is Semtech's vision for IoT? I think the real promise of IoT was to be able to generate data from everything. Yeah. To have a perfect data set on which you could base the decisions you're trying to make as a business or as a consumer, whether it's about optimizing production flow or you know, aspects of your daily life. Mm -hmm. um, and in many ways, um, we think that that vision has been it's been delivered on the cloud side. I mean, if you look at the advances that have been made in cloud platforms in the last five, ten years, yeah, we're at a point now where you know, a, a, a decent high school student can build in an afternoon an AI-based IoT solution. Um, whereas years ago that would have taken weeks if not months of development time. That same simplification has yet to happen on the, on the uh, connectivity side and unfortunately without connectivity there is no data and, and without data there is no cloud solution and so um, our vision is really that, that we can move toward a world where you are able to as a customer in a cost effective and secure way generate data from all of the assets you want to monitor and use that data to drive better decision making. Great, yeah. So what has the company developed to simplify and accelerate the development of IoT applications? Well, yeah, and our focus really is on driving simplification. And to do that, we've moved in the course of the last couple of years from being really a pure silicon company to a company that also provides software and services to make that silicon accessible. What that actually means in reality is providing a range of tools um, that we've talked about before, Laura Basics, so basic building blocks that help developers more rapidly develop solutions, right. um, soft modem products which will be coming to market in this year, that give um, mobile application and cloud application developers a target that they're familiar with, a manageable endpoint. And then finally, uh, cloud services which take you know, complex, repetitive areas of development like geolocation mm -hmm. and turn them into simple API calls. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really good. So, so are there particular industries that you're focusing on with Laura? Well, yeah. part of the problem with the IoT is that the IoT is everything. So, mm -hmm. and in many ways, one of the challenges the ecosystem has faced has been focusing on areas where you know there's there's value, and and where um, customers you know can can where there's opportunity to give customers a better understanding of the value that IoT delivers. Right. We see activity across a vast range of different use cases. Mm -hmm. Where we see the most. Um, there's a lot of activity around utilities, yeah. um, a lot of applications which seek to reduce the OPEX involved in meter reading or the safety issues that are inherent in managing electricity grids, etc. Uh, we see a great deal of activity around tracking things, um, asset tracking, logistics, knowing the whereabouts of, of you know, a parcel, a cat, a, a child, a, um, uh, and the range of different applications we see there are, are nothing sort of astounding. We see a lot, a lot of activity around the built environment, so smart mm. cities, smart home, um, and again, vast range of different applications. And then finally, whilst it's a smaller um, sector, we see a lot of, of, of innovation in the smart ag space, yes. um, a lot of which is focused on better managing use of resources through the agricultural production process, whether it's livestock or, or crops, mostly to, to reduce the impact of those activities on the environment. Yeah, very good. What do you think are the next big trends in IoT? Um, I think it's really a push towards accessibility. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, if you think about the, the, the forecasts of IoT devices that we've all seen, you know, the only way we're going to reach the 50 billion or the 100 billion mark is by making um, these technologies much more accessible to a broader range of audiences. Mm -hmm. And those audiences really are people who come from a mobile application development background, a cloud application development background, not from a hardware development background. Yes. So if you look across the ecosystem, in all of its aspects, you see folks driving toward that simplification, um, either through the cloud, as I talked about earlier, or um, on the hardware side, and I think this is where innovation has been lacking, mm -hmm. to make hardware less hard, to make it simpler and easier for people who are not familiar with embedded hardware development to access the strengths and the capabilities that, that solutions like LoRaWeb can, can deliver. Mm. And so I think you see this industry-wide push toward simplification, and I think the challenge in that is how do you simplify without reducing functionality? How do you deliver a range of tools to a, to a, a developer mm -hmm. that doesn't require them to have specialised skills but still allows them to do what they want to do? Right. That's good.